Welcome to the channel. My name is Dr. Frank. I'm the founder of Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching Programs, which are dedicated to helping people quit nicotine, THC, energy drinks, and adult media content. But in today's video, I'm not going to be talking about quitting, but I'm going to be talking about three big reasons why you should consider taking a tolerance break if you haven't taken one in a while. And at the end of today's video, I'm going to share with you guys three tips and tricks on how often and how to go about taking a tolerance break from smoking weed. Now, if you wind up enjoying today's video, I put all of this information into a PDF, a bullet point PDF for you guys, and you can check out the pinned comment or the video description to download that PDF. It's completely free. You can also learn more about our paid one-on-one -on -one addiction recovery coaching, or you can learn more about joining our mental health addiction mindset community. All right, three reasons why you should take a tolerance break, something that I wish I had done several years ago prior to getting tied up in cannabis or weed addiction. Reason number one, and this sounds obvious, but it's, it's not, is so you don't develop a tolerance to the drug. Uh, tolerance, this is requiring more and more weed to get the same high or to achieve the same high, is one of the hallmark signs of addiction and dependence to a substance. Building a tolerance is often one of the first warning signs of addiction. And this happens for a very simple reason when it comes to cannabis. Uh, inside your body, you have something called the endocannabinoid system. And your body actually makes its own THC and CBD. It's called other stuff inside your body. And those THC and CBD cannabinoids are known as endocannabinoids. Endo meaning comes from within. Your body makes its own endocannabinoids, and these endocannabinoids bind to something called the CB1 and CB2 receptors inside your endocannabinoid system. I think it's predominantly the CB1 receptors, but someone could correct me on that. And this system is largely responsible for emotional regulation. It plays a role in hormone production. It plays a role in sleep regulation, circadian rhythm. It plays a role in bone density, heart health, a major role in skin health and gut health. It impacts and plays some role of regulation on almost every body system. And it's self-regulating. Your body makes its own. Now, when you smoke cannabis, and I'm talking about specifically higher concentration THC products, okay, the active component in marijuana or weed, Delta 9, that gets you high. THC becomes the preferential cannabinoid, and it's a phytocannabinoid coming from a plant, not from within, that binds to the CB1 receptors inside your gut, on your brain stem, everywhere where these CB1 receptors are present, which are predominantly, I think, in your central nervous system. Now, let me repeat that. When you consume a lot of THC, THC becomes the preferential cannabinoid that your endocannabinoid system starts to receive because of its super high affinity for binding to the CB1 receptors. What that means is your body says, wait a minute, I have enough cannabinoids present. So your body starts to downregulate its own production of endocannabinoids. It starts to turn down the volume on its own production of endocannabinoids. On top of that, I think it's also largely accepted nowadays based on research that your body also turns down the volume on the receptors for its own endocannabinoids because it prefers THC because of its ability to bind so strongly to the CB1 receptors. So your body's shutting off its own production. And this is where a tolerance starts to develop. Okay, we see the same thing with alcohol. We see the same thing with other pills and drugs out there. You see the same thing with caffeine. Okay, a tolerance develops up, develops, and this is one of the hallmark signs of the start of addiction and dependence. Now, 
Tolerance breaks are important because when you quit smoking weed, you're going to give your body the opportunity to start to redevelop its own and make its own endocannabinoids again. And that's super important because by doing that, you're going to avoid building a tolerance. Now, we're going to talk about how long and how often you should take a tolerance break in just a few moments. But hey, if you're liking this content, subscribe. Like 70% of the people who watch my channel don't subscribe. Reason number two why tolerance breaks are so important. Uh, you, when, you, when you take a tolerance break, you're able to see or experience how weed has been impacting you physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, and spiritually. If you're going to do something every day or close to every day, I think it's a good idea to always check in with that something and make sure that you're not under an illusion that it's benefiting you when it could potentially be harming you. Uh, and this goes for everything. I think if you're in a long-term marriage, it's always good to check in with your partner. If you're in a long-term relationship, if you've been in the same career for 20 years, it's good to take a break and go away and then think to yourself, oh man, I can't wait to get back to work or God, I really hate that job. I couldn't fathom going back again. I can't believe how burned out I am. We take breaks or we take assessment of a lot of things in our lives that we do on a daily basis, and there's no reason not to do the same thing with cannabis. Secondly, I think from a physical standpoint, a lot of people are often surprised. I know Joe Rogan talked about this during his Sober October, and he said when he was quitting weed, he was like, yeah, my stomach was kind of off. Some, I think he said he had some headache symptoms, but he talked a lot about the sleep and the insomnia and the rebound of REM sleep and the crazy dreams that he was having. That I know for sure he talked about. The rest, I don't want to put words in his mouth. But if you quit and you have crazy insomnia and you're coughing up tar, resin constantly and your body hurts and your stomach's upset and all these things start happening and you're having horrible cravings, another hallmark symptom of addiction, you might want to pause and start to reassess your relationship with cannabis and the frequency in which you're using it. Because each of those things might be warning signs that you are headed down the path of addiction. It's also showing you or giving you an opportunity during this tolerance break to see how this drug, marijuana, weed, it's a drug, it's a plant, but most all drugs starts with plants, FYI, how it's impacting your body, okay? And there's nothing wrong with doing that. We're not casting judgment. We're just saying like, oh, wow, I didn't realize that it was having such an impact on me. The third reason why tolerance breaks are so important is because you want to, if you're thinking about quitting, it's not as daunting as saying, okay, I'm going to quit forever. And for some people, a tolerance break, with which mentally is far less anguish than quitting forever, especially if you really enjoy cannabis, is not as daunting. And this might be the first step towards sobriety or recovery for a lot of people if they so decide during their tolerance break that they want to continue to stay away from weed. Some people might take a tolerance break and say, oh my God, I can't wait to get back to smoking. That's fine too. I have no issues with any of that stuff. But for some people, the tolerance break is going to be that first step towards addiction, recovery, and sobriety, and it's not nearly as daunting as saying, okay, I'm never going to smoke again. So that's the third benefit to taking tolerance breaks, especially if you have been dabbling with the idea of quitting smoking weed. Now, the question becomes, how often and how does one go about taking a tolerance break? Well, this isn't really rooted in science, and I don't know that anyone knows the answer, so please don't take this as medical advice or 100% fact. The reality is it's going to be different for everyone, but what I would recommend if you smoke every day minimally is every 90 days, I would recommend taking a four-week period off, about 30 days off, so 90 days on, 30 days off. I recommend that because it's generally accepted, even in heavy smokers, that somewhere around the two to four week mark, your body starts to make its own endocannabinoids again. Now, the reality is for a lot of people, 
it would probably take about 90 days for them to fully detox cannabis, especially if you're doing dabs or smoking medical carts or cartridges on a regular basis, especially higher concentration THC products. I think a generally safe rule is every 90 days, once every three months, taking a month off. I think this is a really good a good time frame. Now, listen, you could also take tolerance breaks by uh, indulging in periods of moderation. So you smoke for a week, you don't smoke for a week. You smoke on weekends, you don't smoke during weekdays. You don't smoke during the day, you only smoke at night. A tolerance break, in my opinion, is really anything that you're doing to limit your consumption of the substance. And it, and and if taking a month off is too much for you, then maybe you're the person who starts by, you know, saying, okay, I'm not going to smoke in the mornings. I'm only going to smoke at night. And then you advance that to every other night or you advance that to every third night, whatever. You get the gist. Just you're smoking less, okay? That's a step in the direction of a tolerance break. Now, how do you take a tolerance break? I think the most important thing to do is plan something fun, plan something enjoyable. I think one of the big reasons for taking a tolerance break should be exploring things outside of smoking weed. So maybe this is a point where you go on a vacation. Maybe this is a point where you indulge in a new activity, bike riding, walking, working out, uh, scootering, hiking. It really doesn't matter. A new hobby, making social media content. But I recommend during this time, you do something else. And the reason why I say that is because you might find a lot of joy in that other activity and you might actually find that you're getting more joy from doing that than you were getting from smoking weed. Uh, when you're taking a tolerance break, you're going to have a lot more time on your hands. And the last thing that we want to happen is for you to sit around and just say, oh my God, I'm so bored. Uh, I got to just white knuckle it for the next 30 days until I can smoke again. Because that, that simply isn't true. Tolerance breaks are about exploring other options and other aspects of your life without the use of cannabis. You might find out that you enjoy that more. You might say, God, I tried, but I can't wait to get back to smoking weed. And either way, here on our channel, we don't judge people. A lot of people get very angry when I make videos like this and they say, you know, that's that's not 12 step. Pick a side, have an opinion. I have an extremely firm opinion on things. And my opinion is that if something has become a destructive addiction in your life, you need to take full accountability for that and you need to start making a change. If something is not destructive, if something has not become a detrimental addiction in your life and you enjoy that something, even if it has harm, but you don't personally care, like you have, you, you don't care, you truly don't care, well, by all means, continue to indulge yourself. I would, the only reason I would tell someone to quit a substance is to improve their quality of life, not to decrease it. And that is my firm opinion on this topic for all the people that attack me when I talk about this stuff. So if you guys enjoyed this, enjoyed this conversation, be sure to get that free PDF guide in the pinned comment or the video description on how to take tolerance breaks. Or if you're too lazy to do that or you don't feel like doing that, just follow me right into the next video where I talk a little bit more about how to actually quit smoking weed and withdrawal symptoms. All right, guys, see you in one of those spots, pinned comment, next video or video description.